is a human. I definitely believe I'm a mermaid. Do we laugh to keep from crying? Mm. Or can we just laugh because it's fun? Whoa! Hold on. Hold on. Then the natural tendency is you start worshiping creation. If they make all species club at high schools, we're moving to the woods. Bruce Lawn. We've been kind of having some of this conversation with some of the logical conclusions of there being no objective truth and where these things could lead. And to my surprise, this is way earlier than expected. So you haven't seen this. Zach is going in blind. I, I have never seen this. Let's, All I saw was you added the sentence to the note. And I was like, what is that? Let's jump in. So this is from Melissa Dordery's channel. We should check out uh, my conversation with her about the new age. And you guys will really appreciate that. So check this out. Let's Other kins are human. Consciousness is expanding and people are starting to question more. What is a human? I definitely believe I'm a mermaid. This lifestyle is kind of like a coloring book where she hands me the lines and I can just fill them in with whatever color I want. I like to think I'm a 24 seven kid. Zach, Zach is blown away. What did I just see? And the 1.25? I'm like, you want to play it at regular time? Just, just for the intro. Because this are, is so they, well edited. Guys, these aren't furries. This is this is this <laughs> wait, is something else. Wait. Okay, run it. Other kins are human. Consciousness is expanding, and people are starting to question more. What is a human? I definitely believe I'm a mermaid. This lifestyle is kind of like a coloring book where she hands me the lines, and I can just fill them in with whatever color I want. I like to think I'm a 24/7 kitten. My name is Tony, and I'm a human pup. I'm Andrew. I'm Tony's husband and trainer. Hold on. <laughs> no, you're not. Hold on. Whoa! Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let it rock. Let it rock. Bro. Wait, wait, wait. I know you got a joke about him being a trainer, dog. No, because <laughs> Melissa says something in the video. Okay, okay. I'm Andrew. I'm Tony's husband and trainer. Today's topic is trans species. Yes, this is an actual thing, an actual issue, and it is growing in popularity. Shout out to Melissa Dordery. This is an amazing video. Any light searching in the tubes of you land, world, you will find that this is actually something that many people struggle with. Case in point, remove my genitals to make me a genderless alien. The Whoa! Rem a genderless alien? alien? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all laughing, dude. That's Go really ahead. sad. Go ahead that he has already spent $60,000 at the time of, of this video, which is in 2017, trying to transform himself into a genderless alien. Here's another one. This man's wife as a pup. This person identifies as a dog. This one identifies as a cat. This one identifies as a six-year-old girl. This guy identifies as a hobbit. And this girl identifies as a gender-fluid demon doll. It's hard to tell which one of these she I find more demon time <laughs> over the others. Now, I am still learning about this, but there is a word for this other than trans species. They are called other kin, which are people who socially and spiritually identify as not entirely human. And as you can see, this also applies to the fantasy realm. All they want to do is to find their true self. For me, honestly, this sounds like a strange double standard because they're trying to find their true self by basing their identity on something that isn't tethered to reality. Mm. In a society where living wow. your truth is the moral standard, speaking mm. against this in any way is seen as hate speech. And if you are someone who has stumbled upon this video and you just do not agree with me, I do wanna say that this is not about hate at all. This is about truth. I love these people and I want to see them well. Now, I haven't seen Matt Walsh's documentary, What is a Woman? yet, but I do know that he interviewed someone who identifies as a trans wolf. Now, I've watched quite a few of these videos and the common thread that they all seem to have is the same argument that somebody would have that would claim to be non-binary, transgender, gender fluid, is that they say that they are born in the wrong body. They're an animal spirit that happens to be in a human body. Now, I gotta say, I do not think it's a right to jump on the bandwagon of making fun of them. Fine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you like this. She's a better Christian than me. Oh, that, that's a fact, <laughs> son. She's a better Christian than me. Do we laugh to keep from crying, mm. or can we just laugh because it's funny? Someone said we need a comment. <laughs> I want to hear from you guys. <sighs> wow. I think it's deeper than cosplay. Yeah, cosplay is like. This is how they're identifying. Yeah, cosplay is like a couple times a year. Yes. You, 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 you're you, really good at DIY, and you make a super fire Iron Man costume over a year that actually works, kind and of an engineer. You, and then you go to Comic-Con. Yeah, you go to Comic-Con, you're like, cosplay. I'm dressed as Iron Man. That's cosplay. <laughs> this is not that. 
this is not that. And what she says is, in a society that's all about living your truth, mm -hmm. to point to push against this is some would consider it hate speech. Wow. So here is is this, I guess would be a but is this the logical conclusion of like fringe postmodernism in the sense that there is no truth, there is no objective reality. You can create things and whatever you want to do is who you are. Genderless alien vibes. Then I thought about how do these people sustain themselves? Oh, like... How do they make money? Like... Do they go work as genderless aliens? You're a pup and then you go to Petco and work. <laughs> right? Like, how, do, how does that work, you know? Wow, what a trip. I, I do not think that that is Christ-like or okay. These... We just spent too long and then the next sentence she plays... I don't is, know... If... I don't think it's Christ-like or okay. I'm like... I know, I know, you're right. <laughs> yes, yes and no. Like yes and no. Like yes and no. Like there's you think it's okay to have a little humor in yes. some in some like areas that might yes. be considered like mean or whatever. Yes. So what is that? Like what it, when is, I think what's there, that line? I think there are times where people are so out of the realm of reality mm. that poking fun and mocking them is actually can can not is but can be a utility to disrupt and get the truth through them mm. for a scriptural example i'll just give you guys one brief one these, these are all over the 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 old and new testament but the easiest ones that come to me is when paul is writing the church in galatia and and this is a bunch of folks who are gentiles that then get saved and then the Jewish Christians tell them and say, hey, you now need to go follow the law. Specifically, you now need to go get circumcised, circumcised as yeah. adults. And Paul goes on to write, and he says, I'd rather you just completely castrate yourself. I'd rather you just chop your junk off, there right? You go. Because you are trying to keep any part of the law, you might as well just go ahead and castrate. And so he you might as well become a genderless alien. Whoa, what a, what a crazy time. What a callback. Scripture, what a good callback. <laughs> but Paul is mocking them. Oh, okay. He's writing a church he loves, and he's mocking them. He's making fun of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And so whether I don't think he was literally telling them to chop off their junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He was, he was, he was driving home a hyperbolic point that probably really hurt their feelings. Mm, they're like, how dare he make a joke right. of our right. of so, tradition and law? Yeah. So with non-Christians, it's a bit different, but I do think there's a time and a place to call out and even use humor to disrupt these sorts of things. So I'm with Melissa here, but I also think there's a time and a place for it. And then I'm also just being like, she's a better Christian than me. Yeah, I need, to, I need people to identify the time and place because I'm always at that time and place. <laughs> Zach's always ready to roast any and everybody for any reason. Let's play the video. People are made in the image of God too. But I also think that there is a type of persecution complex, if you will, that develops. Some people think that because they are being made fun of, it verifies to them that what they are doing is right and true. Mm. Christians do this pause too. Pause that, pause that, pause that. That's an interesting point. So she's saying that sometimes... If you ridicule people, that will only drive them deeper into their delusion. Ah, I think a lot about like flat Earth people, and no disrespect to you if you're a flat Earth person, but I probably, I probably clown you. Yeah, right. And then, but that drives them deeper into the delusion that they're, what they believe is true. This because, is what they want you to say. Yeah, yeah, that's what they want they you to say. They programmed you since you were young to to yeah. make fun of your friends when they brought the truth. Right, right. And so that can drive them deeper into the delusion. Wow. So I think this is a terrible way of measuring truth just because you're being persecuted doesn't mean that what you believe is right or true here's another huge Pause issue it. so she said just because of what you believe doesn't make it right or true that's a great point i see this behavior and in a way i only partially blame them this is just my opinion but the people that are around them i think they are part of the problem i see a lot of enabling with this they think that what they are doing is loving it makes me think of the show my 600 pound life Right, and there's the my people. wife when she watched that show all the time when she was <laughs> pregnant because she, you know, she put on some weight because she was pregnant, so she Yo. felt better about her weight. Yo. <laughs> she's like someone bigger than me, bro. So yeah, but but a lot of the times in that show, it's uh, the doctors talks to the family, and they're like, mm. "You ain't six hundred pounds. What you doing? Mm. They can't get up and walk. How are they getting food?" Mm. And they're like, "Well, I mean, I just feel bad, so I go and get the McDonald's." 10 bags full of McDonald's. Sheesh. It's like, yikes. Here's part of the issue. If you are wanting to be the poster child of inclusion, then that means you got to include everyone, no matter what package they're in. 
and everyone is too scared and afraid to question it. When someone claims an identity, you are to be supportive and to affirm as long as it fits the cultural agenda. I made a video about this not too long ago about why I am homeschooling because of the transgender ideology. As we and are. if you can't tell, I am very vocal about my disagreement with this gender ideology and the stuff that's coming with it. Whenever someone embraces a worldview, as I mentioned before, you end up having to be consistent with it. Mm. So if your worldview says that people can have fluid genders, there's a gender spectrum, and you're not to judge someone by how they feel on the inside, who their true selves are, then you're going to have to be consistent with that and you have to affirm someone who identifies as a non-human or partial human. It makes me wonder if at some point we will not be asking what is a woman, but what is a human? What do you think so far about this, Zach? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's like one of those things that has been talked about almost from the beginning in the deeper conversations and now is being talked about more prevalently. Mm -hmm. Like the deeper conversations back when this stuff first came out mm -hmm. in the conservative Christian circles is like, well, eventually we're going to be asking what a human is, you know? And now we're actually at the point where we're like, oh, we're there. There's videos being made about we might be talking about what is a human. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. We're there. Shout out to the anime Blaze. He says, everyone says it's their truth, but they never stop to think that everyone can't be right. Oof. That's a good point. We could all be wrong, but we all can't be right. It all it all can't be true. <laughs> That's a fact, son. Go ahead. There with the abortion debate, but again, I digress. This is what I'm going to call toxic inclusion. This is the end game for mm. those who get what they want with Pause their inconsistent. That's a, I, I've used the word toxic empathy. Yeah. Weaponized empathy. She called it toxic inclusion. But the same sort of thing. It's like it's like well, to not discredit the logic of my thing, you can also be included, even though I don't fall. Like, it's the whole argument. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't understand them doesn't mean it's not true. Right. You're just ignorant, and so then you you walk that out to being like, well, like maybe I'm ignorant. Mm. Maybe they are a pup, and he's the pup's trainer. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, man. Yeah. inclusivity and equity. What used to be a rare and isolated incident of someone having inner emotional or mental issues has now become trendy. It's been embraced as living your truth. When you don't know who you are and your identity is grounded in a subjective fluid morality and not grounded in reality or objective truth, then by default, you're going to find your identity in something that is grounded in a lie and a subjective truth that constantly changes. It Come reminds on. me of a cat you know, trying to catch a laser pointer. They're all excited when they think they've got it. <laughs> Only to find it flittered away to another location, that tricky little laser. The satisfaction of catching mm. it is actually an illusion, though. But the cat doesn't know that. They keep trying to catch it. Wow. Wow. What a metaphor. What a metaphor. Wow. <laughs> I wish my freaking brain worked that well. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was that was ill. Yo, she's, she, she's amazing. I love her content. That's, yeah, that's crazy. This is what I see with people trying to find their identities. If anything, people identifying as the opposite gender or animals or anything at this point only goes to show that people are striving to find meaning and purpose in this life. Guys, we are made to worship something. We are going to worship the creator or the creation. Mm -hmm. Also, some brilliant person on Pause my that right there. That's 100% true. You think about Romans 1. Yeah. And a lot of this can be anchored to Romans 1 and the idea of, of natural law and the, the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, St. Thomas Aquinas later on coining right the idea of natural law, which I kind of get into a bit deeper with my conversation with Trent Horn, so I can't go super deep into it. But this idea that there's like a natural order that God has laid out, and the more we push against that, the further we get away from that, and then we just completely lose ourselves. But even even so, like natural law is almost like um, untouched. You things are gonna uh, fall into place, like untouched. Yes. Like you could say, like, like without people knowing Jesus, they're going to continue reproducing. Yes, they're gonna they're gonna be like without ever reading. They, they they're gonna have the access to to reason and logic. They're gonna live together for twelve years, right? Boyfriend and girlfriend, I, I, super, and then and then they want to have a baby, and they're like, but maybe we should get married, right? And and then they see the value in like right. the nuclear family. Na that's natural law. Yeah, that's natural law. That's crazy. Yeah, go ahead. 
video made this point, and I want to share it, that we are made in God's image and likeness, and the devil hates that. He hates God. He will do everything in his power to shift us as far away as possible from that. They said to imagine a human being identify as a cat or a dog when we were created above these creatures. This is actually a spiritual search too, and what people are doing is filling themselves with spiritual fast food. It has no sustenance or longevity. So she is tying this into it being a spiritual sh search, but then also the, the reality of like, if you're not in a proper standing with your creator, then mm. the natural tendency is you start worshiping creation. Yeah. Right? Whether you're literally worshiping cats and dogs, or you're worshiping your own sexuality, or you're worshiping art. What a trip, right? yeah. Like how many people do we know that like flat out just worship art, like and, and their art becomes their idol. Mm. And so nothing else really matters besides this pursuit. Yeah. Right. And so it's the same thing. It's whether it's art, whether it's identifying as an animal, whether it's identifying with your own sexuality or as your own pup. whatever as a, as a pup. It's all the same thing. It's all a distortion of not being in a proper standing with your creator. Wow. And then therefore worshiping creation. That's a trip. Is this, is this an extreme form of body dysmorphia? I would say. Reva, uh, Reva Small, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I, th I think she, I think she's spot on. So they live one fleeting happiness at a time craving and living for their next serotonin fix. Mm. There are many examples of this as well. And one of them is Demi Lovato. I made a podcast about her transition not too long ago. And I made a prediction in that podcast that she would change her mind eventually. I <laughs> Wait, did she change her mind? <laughs> yeah. I need to go back to the headline. And I made a prediction in that podcast that she would change her mind. Demi Lovato changes her mind and goes back to she, her pronouns. Ain't that good? And what was she before? They, them? They, them. But the, does... de the degree of first world problems that changing your pronouns has to have. And we're not even talking like full on transgender, like the gender dysphoria. She just literally wanted to change her pronouns. Like She got too much money. You got way too. No, no, no. <laughs> you got too much money and you got way too much time to think and be in your head. Yeah. To be like, you know what? I don't, I don't identify as a woman no more. Just refer to me as they them. You you've had too many back to back pool days. Yeah, Just chilling by the pool. Way too much time. To yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason. There's a weekend, yes. and then we back to work. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do something. You gotta do something with your idle time. That music way too passive income. Way too <laughs> passive. You gotta do something with your idle time, or this is if you don't know Jesus, this is where it's gonna go. You're gonna get into this weird <laughs> like maybe, maybe I'm a they them. I don't know. Go ahead. Mind eventually. I'd say that Demi Lovato is probably one of the best examples I can think of of someone whose life is just one big, huge cry for help. And everyone's just giving her a high five as she drowns. <laughs> There's an obvious restlessness there. And if she continues this pattern, then I predict she'll probably change her mind again. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. There is a reason wow. why Jesus describes himself as being the bread of life, the uh, living water, a on. spiritual reason. Everyone hungers and thirsts spiritually. Jesus never said people would know satisfaction apart from him. He was very clear and persistent that only in him do we have our identities and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And guess what we do without him? We continue to hunger and thirst. This is a huge theme. We cut off our genitals and become genitalist aliens. And the genitalist these... aliens is by far the most egregious. That's the craziest one. one. This whole thing. Identity <laughs> issues and beyond. People are eating spiritual mud, not knowing that there's something better. So Sheesh. as I just mentioned, I like to observe patterns of behavior. Pause and it. She said people are eating spiritual mud, but they don't know there's anything better. And if you think about that metaphor, if you think about someone... Like, let's just remove mud, but just someone that's only had processed food yeah. and only ate stuff out of a box and only ate stuff from, from fast food places. Mm. It is very difficult to get them to, to, to eat actual, like, high nutritious, nutrient dense, high protein, low volume foods. It, they literally, like, their taste buds take time to adjust. Oh, yeah. And so it's like you're going through your entire life in this entire society eating complete junk and consuming complete junk when it comes to anything of spiritual sustenance. Yeah. And then the truth is going to feel like broccoli and poison to you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's going to feel like, what is this that you're trying to give me? This is terrible. Yeah. Your taste buds are shot. But your taste buds are shot. Wow. You're, e you're used to eating. She said mud. I would just say just junk. You know what I mean? Like we, we were talking earlier, like I feel, and I was saying, I feel like as I lose more weight, I come to the realization that one of my meals per day, I shouldn't really enjoy. I shouldn't mm -hmm. love every part of it. Yep. So I feel like there's all, cause there's always that next level mm -hmm. of you need to consume something that is difficult for you. You gotta do you know that. What I'm saying? And so the same, same goes with this stuff is like, if you're just chilling, if mm -hmm. you're, if your life is so cushy, 
then of course, of course you're not growing. You're not, right. you know, like you can't be exposed to any of that stuff. I could be wrong and I really hope that I am. But my prediction <laughs> is that if this behavior continues, we will see a normalization of this on a grander scale from mm. schools to everyday people to pop culture to government. I mean, we're already seeing this come out of the fringes of society. Pop club. It's no longer fringy. I predict that just like there's an advocation for gender ideology right now, a gender spectrum, non-binary, what have you, there will be advocating for all species, including fantasy ones. And these examples I'm giving are adults, but I know, I know there are kids out there doing this too. Mm. We're moving to the woods if this happens. <laughs> if they make all species club at high schools, we're moving to the woods. We'll get, yeah, we'll get fiber or, internet wired up through the mountain. Or just out of California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole earth is California. And just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you're off the hook. Because look, here's the thing. A society that is not tethered to reality for the sake of a false peace leads to a society prone to use power to define truth. You end up believing lies about yourself. The thought in your head turns into desires and the desires turn into actions to define truth. You end up believing that's, lies that's about a, that's yourself. That's a gym. The that's a gym. What do you mean by that? She said, a society not tethered to the truth will use power to define it. So basically, might is right. Mm. If you can if you can gain the most amount of influence and the most amount of get power, enough people. get enough power, get enough popularity behind an idea, then that becomes the truth of the, of the way, the land of the way. Oof. Thought Almost in your done. head turns into desires, and the desires turn into actions. Believing in lies has consequences, and since our culture is embracing this stuff, we're seeing it manifest in our society in these ways. The devil is called the father of lies, a very interesting title given to him by Jesus. Mm. And the thing is, is that everyone is not on a truth quest. They're on a happiness quest. You're oh not allowed to question what makes someone happy. Then you're forced to affirm lies and you'll be seen as intolerant if you don't. Wow, what a win. So what people do to keep the false peace is they jump on the false tolerance bandwagon. I usually say, and this is true, that bad theology hurts people. Well, the same is true for ideology. Bad mm. ideology hurts people. Here's the hard thing to do, um, but it, I believe is the right thing to do. Surround yourself with people who tell you the truth. They will tell you the truth. People who love you too much to lie to you. And not just any truth either, truth that is in line with God's word. Love delights in truth. It does not delight in your truth. Also, in my last video that I did on this, I was shocked at how many of you said that this was going on in schools in your area. And I would actually Yikes. really like to research this more and know more about that. So if there are names, photos, good news sources, uh, like good evidence showing- She's trying to expose these elementary yes. school kids. <laughs> I love it. I would enjoy looking into yeah. this. So please leave- ahead, pause that. Yeah, I found out that there's a, a school out here that they have a whole table dedicated to this. To, do to the dog kids, <sighs> right? To the dog kids, yeah. Yep, and you, they they can bark and meow at each other, but you can't walk past them. And, dark. and that's in Poway. It's in Poway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This is secondhand account of someone that I'm friends with. Someone that's friends with someone that works there allegedly. So I don't know. You know what I mean? But it's crazy, man. And we just we just did a video about this. Yeah, we did <laughs> about the furries. About the furries. Yeah. We just did a video about this about the furries. I'll link that up that you guys can go check out. So I think it's just interesting how the, this stuff is hidden, and it's in my opinion, only going to get worse and worse and worse unless people figure out ways to push back in a reasonable, reasonable manner. And it, and said, it said that Simeon blessed, blessed God. God.